Well, if we realised um, from a very early age that he had uh, one or two physical um, characteristics that were different. The obvious one, he was taller than all of his friends, taller than the other kids in nursery and ultimately at school. Um, but with that also went uh, a problem with his chest. So we knew that he had physical things which we just thought was something which would bother him about his appearance as he got older. We didn't know what Marfan was, it had never been mentioned, but um, we were seeing a consultant about his height mm -hmm. and about his chest mm -hmm. till around about the age of 10. Mm -hmm. And that was rounded up with, uh, uh, by the consultant with, uh, he dismissed it as familial. In 75% of cases, there is another family member affected. However, in 25% of cases, the patient is the first one affected in the family as the result of a new mutation in the gene. These patients are often missed early on, although their tall stature or their poor eyesight uh, may make someone wonder that they may have it. Um, they don't actually go through the full diagnostic workup. Uh, he'd been uh, working uh, for a building com company in uh, Fremantle, to sell to Perth. Um, which he had to take a train to get to work there. And uh, he'd, he'd felt chest pain after, I think he demolished a wall that morning along with his, his friend. He was quite enjoying it as well, he enjoyed the physical side of, of what he was doing. He took a train back himself and, and, and went off back home to backpackers, rested overnight. Um, he, must, he didn't ring anybody. Uh, I have his phones, there's one or two texts on his phones, people asking if he was all right, because I brought his phone back and checked the texts. Um, but he just rested. He, he said, yeah, I'm off to, to see the doctors in the morning. And in the morning he got up uh, and, and went to, to a, a local GP. As he walked into that doctor's surgery, um, after a painful night, the doctor has looked at him, took his blood pressure, which was low, and related chest pain to the physical appearance of Liam and said, have you heard of Marfan? That was his next sentence. Early diagnosis and appropriate intervention is really crucial for these patients and that our uh, medical community, particularly the general practitioners who are the first port of call of the patients, are aware uh, that when we should interfere and whether they should, um, if you like, screen these patients. His aorta had, had ballooned eventually to over seven centimetres, which is, yeah. is way too big and on the way to been a major problem, which it was from. Yeah. Um, the, w the way it was described to us was because it, Marfan syndrome affects fibrillin in your body, which is like the elasticity, if you like. Um, it, we once had it described to us as like when you blow a balloon up, it never ever goes back to where it should be when you first blew that balloon up. So all of the things that Liam did, blown that was up, gradually up, yeah. getting larger and larger. You're pushing um, that aorta, yeah. Until that moment when he did something that mm. just took it over the edge, you know. Some of these patients where in the community it is thought that, well, yes, their aorta, for instance, is dilated, but it's not bad enough and we can watch them. It is not the case. We have seen these patients who have major complications and with great regret, they die. We got there, you know, mm. in 24 hours and a nurse, off-duty nurse, picked mm. us up uh, at one o'clock in the morning from the airport and took us directly to see Liam. Brilliant. Fantastic people. Um, and we've got to see him, he's very tired. Mm. And this is the first time we'd seen him in nine months since he left the doorstep. Um, but he was on the mend. He'd come through an operation and he was on the mend. Uh, so immense relief. Um, and then the next day we set about shopping for him uh, and get him <laughs> some big clothes. Uh, pajamas, pajamas. I couldn't believe yeah. what he was wearing in the hospital. Yeah. Like, oh, we had him some big, big clean clothes um, and shorts and stuff. And, you know, in, in hindsight, we couldn't have really know that this was going to happen. 24 hours later, he was going to have a, well, he managed to have a fit of seizure. So we spent a lot of that day shopping for him. His friends were visiting him. He was very tired. We found this out. I have a cousin in Australia who'd come up to visit him. Um, but we thought, yeah, we'll, we'll let them get their visits in and then we go back and see him again tonight, which we did. Um, and that was the last time we were going to see him alive, as it were. Liam Gash died on August the 13th, 2006, from complications following an operation to fix his dissected aorta. He was 22 years old.